Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we'll take a look at the brand new Android 16 Beta 1. Now this is part of the beta program, so the official launch of Android 16 is not just yet. I'll actually share the full entire timeline from platform stability to the official release here in just a second. But first off, let's take a look at one of the brand new updates, and that is the logo of Android 15 versus Android 16. Now for both of these, this is pretty much a little Easter egg where you're able to take a look at the logos. You press and hold on it, and then it takes you into the mini game of you flying a little spaceship. The other cool thing with the Android 16 logo over here is that if you count all of these stars, there are 16 stars. Now, this beta program just launched on January 23rd. Now, I just got back from the Galaxy S25 event, so I wasn't able to shoot this video yesterday. But we'll take a look at a bunch of brand new features that Android 16 is bringing. Now, one thing that's nice about Android 16 is that it does come with the Android security patch of January 5th. So let's talk about the schedule of Android 16, just because you might be wondering when is it available for my phone. So just remember this one is the beta program. So you have to sign up for the beta program to actually have Android 16 beta one. So here's when the beta releases, which is during the month of January, which it is. Then you have during the month of February, you'll have another little update. So I think this is the bigger update and then like a smaller update. And then during March, we'll have a bigger update again, which has given us that platform stability. April will kind of finish out a little bit with a smaller update. And then the final release will be sometime probably end of April, beginning of May. So that is the time schedule. And if you wanted one that's even more detailed, this is coming from the Android developers. So January beta one, initial beta quality release over the air update to early adopters who enroll in the Android beta, which I can place that link below the video inside the description if you would like to join. During the month of February is beta two, incremental beta quality release. Then you have, as I mentioned before, beta three in March, platform stability. The first platform stability milestone, including final APIs and behaviors, play publishing also opens. And that pretty much a lot of stuff that we'll kind of cover in this video, talking about what is kind of new and upcoming. Some of it I can't show you, but I can explain it, will be a part of this little update right there. Then during the month of April and May will be beta four, near final builds for final testing, and then the final release of Android 16. And so again, that's probably gonna be a, probably around the you know month of May is my guess for the final release if they're trying to finish it in April, May. So now that we took a look at the logo, we took a look at the time frame of everything coming out. Let's take a look at the release notes. So here are some of the details of this update. Pretty much this one is a beta one released on January 23rd. And then as you scroll on down, this is where it gives you a little bit of details. Pretty much any device that is starting from the Pixel 6 and after. So Pixel 6 through the Pixel 7, the Pixel 8, the Pixel tablet, the Pixel Fold, the Pixel 9 series, the Pixel 9 Fold. This, these are the devices that can sign up for Android 16 Beta 1. And really all of these right here is what is new in the Beta 1 for Android 16. So some of these we'll take a look at and some of these we'd have to really wait to really take a look at more deeper into exactly the features itself. They kind of give the examples of what developers are able to do. Uh, but we'll, first we'll take a look at some of the stuff that we can physically see right now. Now the first thing I wanna do is actually turn off both of these devices because I wanna show you what it looks like after you reboot and then you take a look at your main home screen. So let's turn these things off and then I'll show you what it looks like. So turning these back on, I also want to show the reboot time as well. So they both are, you know, they vibrate at the exact same time. You'll probably see that Android 16 loads a little bit quicker. And you can see that Gemini logo as well. So this one's the Pixel 9 Pro XL. So this one was able to load much quicker. This one is the Pixel 8 Pro. So let's go through, let's get this one unlocked. And you'll actually kind of see a little shadow type of glow right before it goes into the home screen. So I'll just tap on these at the exact same time. And what you'll see is that little glow, that little effect before it goes into the home screen. That is one of the brand new animation features. Now the next change, this one's dealing with predictive back. So as you know, if we go inside of the settings and we go back inside, and if you're using your swipe features, you can actually see the predictive back. It's actually showing you the next screen you would go to right before you actually get to it. And what they were able to add in is that now it'll also work with those buttons. So when you go down to your navigation mode and you put back into your three button navigation, 
I can press and hold right here and it's actually going to show me what is about to you know pop up. If you want to cancel it, you just pretty much swipe up. So again, if I was to press and hold, you can see what screen is about to come with a press and hold. And once you release, it'll actually get you right back to where it was from before. Now, if I remember right, I believe this might also even work when it comes down to your wallpapers and styles when it comes to the screen here. So if I press and hold, it kind of has that little predictive back of where it's you know taking you. So it's not only just a part of the regular settings on the top, but it, they also threw it in with the wallpapers and widgets. And to show you one last time what it looks like with the gestures, I put it back over in the gestures. And when you swipe over, you know, about to go into that next menu right on back, it's going to show you that little predictive back. This next little feature is one where they were able to add in a different location of where you can kind of manage where your contacts are saved. So rather than you going through your contact list or your phone application, you can go inside of apps. And then as you scroll down with apps, what you'll be able to notice is as you scroll on down, one of the things that they were able to add in right here that is not in Android 15 is contact storage. So through apps and down over here, we have your general, you can see your contact storage. And then this way you can either choose where you want it to be stored, either only on the device or your device and also the cloud, which is basically your Gmail. So if I tap on this one, it's going to show all of the different Gmails that's associated on this phone. And I can choose where I want all of my contacts to go. So now that I've tapped it, you can see here that I've probably blacked out a few of my emails, but pretty much you can either store it on device only, or you can do your device and Gmail and you choose which Gmail you want it to be saved under. And you can see here, I actually have three different Gmails in this phone. Now this one's actually a very big one with Android 16. So this is the APV. So advanced professional video, basically giving you that APV codex. So you're able to get as close to raw or losslessness as possible. So you have the highest quality, uh, not only during recording, but also for the post-production for editing. So basically you'll have like lossless video quality, close to raw video quality, low complexity and high throughput intra-frame only coding. Uh, you also have support for high bit rate range up to a few gigabits per second for the the 2k 4k and 8k resolution content so there's actually a lot going on with the apv codec so for a lot of people that love taking videos when it comes down to their you know android devices they're going to love and wait for android 16 for all the stuff that you're able to do when it comes down to shooting and also the post-production which is basically editing so you'll have higher quality video content that you're able to create with your android device Another fun one with this update is progress centric notifications, which means you're getting notifications of the progress of something, meaning maybe you ordered food. So you have a food delivery service, or if you're using Uber now, for some reason they took this page away, my guess is because they're probably doing updates and it'll be relinked to this one again, but they had some really cool images to kind of show you what the notifications would look like. So I was able to find someone who kind of has, you know, a little bit of what it could look like up over here. There's another one that I saw of a tiny little vehicle that was moving along. So if you did an Uber is pretty much basically the Uber getting to you in this section and it shows the car and then it goes to the next section of you going through your destination. And if you close this down a little bit, it'll be in a smaller form. And again, it's just giving you your progress centric notification. Where are you in that progress? So if you ordered food, it would be showing you a section of the food is being prepared. Then it'll show you the section of them actually coming to your home and how far away you are or how far away they are to you. So you're able to watch it all the way up. And once it gets to the end of the line, then that's when they reach their destination, which is yourself of possibly the food drop off. So we covered a few things up over here. And another thing that they also were able to put in was adaptive layouts. So when you think about all the different devices that you're able to use out there between the phones, the tablets, the foldables, the desktops, uh, the windowing modes, large screens, split screens. So it's a way that developers are able to build their Android applications to adapt to any screen size and window size, regardless of the device orientation. So pretty much they're able to kind of make everything uh, perfect to work with aspect ratios, resizability, orientations when it comes down to whatever screen size they are on with the applications, the icons, and just how everything kind of all forms and works together. Also too, scrolling down over here, you also have night mode scene detection, and that is talking about third party applications. So now in the camera itself, if you're in a dark mode situation, or if you bring it up to where the kind of the sun is, the night mode goes away, you bring it down where it's darker on the grass, night mode turns on, uh, the camera night mode scene detection will work now with third party applications. So you can have higher quality photos through any other application rather than you always having to go into the camera application itself of 
the phone. And then the last thing that I want to finish on with this one is you also have photo picker. So what will happen is the photo picker provides a safe built in way for users to grant you the application access to only selected images and videos instead of their entire media library. So when you're using third party applications or regular applications out there and you wanted to upload some images rather than you having them grant access to your full entire gallery of every video and picture, you're able to actually go through there and choose which photos and, and videos has access that you're able to select and then upload to their platform. You know, if it's Instagram or Facebook or whatever it may be. So pretty much uh, it's a way that you, you don't have to grant access to your full entire gallery. Uh, you just get to choose which photos and videos actually is a part of that, that they're able to see that you're able to then upload to that application. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in this update here of Android 16 beta one. Obviously there's going to be more coming with this. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, and again, there, there should be probably a monthly update with this one. So we'll probably see another one, maybe towards the end of February or sometime during the month of February, if there's any type of bugs or issues or fixes that they have to do. And then the next one that will probably happen in March will be the one that will bring more features and more capabilities. And some of the stuff that we talked about today that I couldn't physically show on the phone here, and we just had to read through the articles. So yeah, there should be more uh, bigger update coming in March. So if you are looking at trying to get Android 16 beta one, this is at the point where it's now a part of the beta testers. If you would like to join it, if not, wait up until sometime around March where there is beta three. So this way you have more of a platform stability and then you're more safe and a little bit more happier if you're using it, you know, probably on your primary device. But other than that, hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.